I found this part the most interesting. We'll start this one off right. I'm going to wish everybody who has discovered cancer is alive and vaccines all about murder. Pleasant greetings in the name of the Most High. I want you all to Every understand week I hear that if you don't have a relationship with the Most High, then you need to go and get one. I don't even understand how it's connected to the FaceTime, but right I really want to know it. Talking to you over and over again, then to finally figure out that we are at a point where you need to have a very close relationship with the Creator so that you can understand everything that you're seeing around you. Those are the things that you need to make sure of right now. Hold on a second, y'all. I see because I'm doing this one last time, some people just want to be in the show. But what you're going to find out is when I say I don't play, I don't play, so y'all don't move. One second. I'll be right back. Everybody's undivided attention, including the Doberman Pinscher. I would like to let you all know that tonight you're in tune to the last uh, social media edition of Facts Over Feelings. Tonight will be the last time that I'll come before you. I've been coming before you now for about, oh, three years now. I remember when we started way back in 2017 with the forecast, the forecast about the eclipse. And all of that, and that's how the whole thing got started. And look at where we are now in 2020. We have been rolling along. We've gone from our little small group of dedicated people who used to be here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And now over 100,000 people who, for some strange reason, feel like this is the place to be. That this is where they think that they can hear from the Creator without anybody pulling any strings, without anybody trying to pimp you for your money, without anybody trying to pimp you over your ignorance. No one is trying to do that here simply to enlighten you. We've been here for quite some time. There used to be a time when we could say whatever we wanted to say and nobody would bother us. And then there was a time when we started noticing things started disappearing, things started being censored, things started being blocked, certain individuals could here could say and show anything, and we couldn't. There was a bias that was beginning at the social media company that was Facebook, which somehow then bled over to the ownership that they had for Instagram. Unfortunately, if you all remember, back before the quarantine, I did a show called The Communist, The Comet, and the conspiracy. Do you all remember what happened? They pulled the plug right in the middle of me talking, which had never happened ever in the history of my seven years at the time on Instagram, which further let me know that it was time for me to go. So tonight, I'll give you one last teaching. I'll give you one last piece of advice. I'll make it one last available to you for you to pick up whatever it is you think that you haven't picked up so that you don't have to go through this anymore. If you look on the profile of this Instagram account, you will see a link to my YouTube channel. You might want to go check it out now before I'm gone. At that particular point, you will only be able to find me on my YouTube channel for a little while. And then from there, we off into Blacktube, which is something that you must be a member to be able to join or to see. I feel sorry that I have to take fact over feelings and morning mental away from you on a regular basis, but apparently there's too many snakes in the grass and too many people who are eating off of the message when my message was never meant to be eaten off of to start with. The truth should be told, never to be sold. So tonight, I'm going to talk a little bit about a few things and then you all know how we leave up out of here. And the next time I see you, we'll be on YouTube uh, at the same time on the YouTube channel. If you intend to follow me away after that, if that's so desire, 
then you will then be given directions of how you enter into that particular place. The first thing I want to start off tonight, besides giving praise to the Most High, is I want to tell you all a small story about a group of people, a group of black people, who decided that they wasn't going to have it anymore, who decided to talk amongst themselves like adults, organize themselves, be dedicated to the cause, and then be willing to put themselves on the line. They decided to do this in a place that was notorious for its racism, notorious for its abuse of African-American people. And they went up there, and that was Stone Mountain, on July 4th, which was a holiday that we don't celebrate because we were slaves in 1776. And when we went up there, you know, the white folks didn't notice. They were caught off guard. They didn't even want to talk about it because the implications were too scary. Even people in important places were asking, how is it possible that something like this got under the radar? How did we not know that something like this existed right up under our noses? What is going on? That was to be expected. What wasn't to be expected was the paranoid response by the black community itself. They asked themselves the same question. Where did this come from? How could this have existed right up under our noses? And we thought we knew better, knew nothing about it. So they had a paranoid response. Some responded out of fear. Some responded out of ignorance. Most responded out of some form of a little bit of both. There was some jealousy and some envy. And a lot of the same old emotions that play out all the time. But the bottom line was nobody saw it coming. You were a part of that. You should feel good today because today the superior race, as they call themselves, those who are in power, those who hold all the land, all the wealth, the ones that want you to believe that you didn't invent anything, the ones that want you to believe that the arts came from them, the ones that want you to believe that the great literary works <coughs> came from them, attempted to do today what we did 45 days ago. Not what we did uh, on July t uh, 25th uh, in Louisville, what we did in Stone Mountain. They attempted that today, in case you haven't heard the news. It was a goddamn circus. I am not about to dig into the details. I had too much fun laughing all day long. I had too much fun watching the reports come in. I had too much fun remembering what I saw when I was in Stone Mountain, along with the black folks that were there of the NFAC. And what I witnessed today, what I witnessed today was downright chaos, comedy, and confusion. They even shot themselves. Everything that they accused us of doing, every nasty insult that they hurled at us, turned around and proved true about them. This is a teachable moment, people, because of this right here was an example of what they tell you about you is true about them. Then why can't you see that everything else that they tell you about you is not true about you, but true about them? They want you to believe that you're violent when they're violent. They want you to believe that you're lazy and you're liars when the fact is they're lazy and they're liars. They want you to believe that you're inept and that you're liable to be unsafe and untrained and shoot yourselves. Well, they've done that too. And by the way, yes, I have the video. Oh, you know the video was going to come out. You know somebody caught the discharge on film. The same way that they took that same energy and tried to make it look like we were a bunch of reckless black people, I hope they just they used that same energy because there wasn't even that many of you. We had more people than you, and we had one discharge. You had 30 people, and you still shot somebody. Damn. So please, don't come at me like that. This is a day of... Good doctors. It's not even audience. facts over feelings right now. It's karma over the dealings right now. Karma over everything that's been dealt is coming back at you. Y'all can sit there and be cute if you want to, but you know you need to agree with me right now. I know if somebody got their face scrunched up because they cannot believe that everything that they accuse us of turned around and happened to them. Oh, they was out there fighting. No, oh, it was her. They, they chased them down the street. They had to hide in the library. They hid. We ain't never ran from nobody and we ain't hid from nobody and we're not about to start. Not only that, y'all had guns. Remember? Real guns. That y'all supposed to be experts at shooting. Remember? So keep that same energy because today is our day. Today was our day to celebrate. Today was our day to sit back and show you this is what we're talking about. You see, I keep now y'all understand why I always tell y'all we're not a gang. We're not we're not a mob. We're not we're not some street operation. We are a constitutional militia. And if you have not studied 
the law, if you are incapable of reading the Constitution, if you don't know anything about judicial law, if you know nothing about citizen responsibility and empowerment, then you don't have any business saying that you know anything about a militia. You can join one, but you need to understand what a militia is. It's not a social club. It's not a gun club. It's none of those things. So stop expecting things out of a militia that you expect from a gun club or a club that's there to train you or something like that. That's not what a militia, a militia is a group of citizens who have picked up arms, banded together to go make a point. Everything else just kind of gets picked up as you go along. You understand what I'm saying? Militias can be called up under the Constitution to fight alongside the military. Mobs aren't called up. Gangs aren't called up. Militias are called up. Militias can go on to become police forces. Militias can become the police force for the black community if we structure it as so. There are people right now sitting around in every state forming their own chapters to be a part of a consolidated militia. Now, what you must understand is there are those of us amongst us who don't feel that way. So I thought I would dedicate my last show tonight as a recap of the six types of things that I'm going to leave you to be on the guard for after I'm gone. I've told you about these before. I'm going to go back to one of my favorite books to pull out. You know I'm going to pull it out. You know there's no way to get around it. I am going back into the book of morals and precepts. I'm going somewhere around chapter 12. If you have a copy, most people will ask me, where can I get a copy of the books of morals and precepts? And I tell you that you cannot. It is not a standalone book. It is a part of a series of books. This is the book for morals and precepts, formerly called the book of establishment, this being the third book of the great book of the sons of fire containing the teachings of the great unnamed first masters and the hidden wisdom recorded in earlier times from books written in the sacred letters and made indestructible. These are your ancestors talking. Now your ancestors told us that there are six types of people to be on the lookout for. And as I close this chapter in social media history, because I'm pretty sure these recordings and these, t these teachings will go on to be played over and over again in your home. That's fine. Everything has a beginning and everything has an end. The first person we want to warn you about is greed. Commit no of various need to obtain additional riches. Fill not your heart with love for the possessions of another. Nor support yourself with that with that belongs to him unless you have his authority to do so. A man who is greedy and gasping within his own household is a worm and a good apple. He spreads rottenness throughout the whole. A maggoty fig pollutes the crop. Talking about the greedy people. Greed will gain earthly goods, even riches, but it distorts the soul. The soul of a greedy man is not a pleasant thing to behold. Mm -hmm. Greed is a poison within the heart which contaminates and destroys the good which is in man. The soul builders of virtue, honesty, duty, affection, they wither and die before this cold blast. The next person we want to warn you about is those who are filled with vanity. You see, you have to realize that the vain man scorns wisdom and knowledge, decency, and reserve are strangers to him. He oppresses his inferiors, and he is insolent to his superiors. When we return, look down upon his weakness with amusement. Let me say that again. The person who is vanity, who's all full of themselves, who only wants to care about themselves, they scorn wisdom. You can't tell them anything. And they scorn knowledge. They don't want to know anything. They scorn decency. They don't do anything in decent disorder. They don't care how they talk to you. They have no respect for you, my sister. And they have no reserve. They are reckless. These people are dangerous. They oppress people who are lesser than them. They want you to bow down to them. And they are insolent to superiors who in return look down upon this weakness. That's a weakness as an amusement. The next person you want to be on the lookout for is envy. Oh, you know envy. Yes, 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 yes. He who hates, who excel him and encompass himself with the wall of wickedness so that he is cut off from the good of the earth. The heart of the envious man is gall and bitterness. His tongue spits forth venom and the success of his neighbors lengthens his night. The worms of hatred and malice feast upon his heart and his soul is corrupt. And decay. His face reflects but dimly the fearsome thing 
within. Someone who's filled with envy is an ugly soul. If they're vain too, they're an even uglier soul. If they're filled with greed, they have become something so grotesque that you cannot even look at them. There's another person you want to be on the lookout for. It is the man with the bad temper. It says the hot-headed man cannot restrain himself. He exposes his weakness before all men. He shrieks his fury and his voice soars up to the unheeding heavens. <laughs> he tears himself apart. And he casts his body into weariness. He rages like a destructive fire among the reeds, which blaze up in a gust of flame, and then are no more only black and ashes remain. Mm. The real man smiles at his futility and quietly goes on his way. Y'all need to catch that last part. The real man smiles <laughs> at his futility and quietly goes on his way. This is written in the book. I've been teaching y'all this for almost three years now. It says, turn your back on the bad-tempered man. Leave him to his own company, that he may consume himself. The fire that blazes in his belly shall reduce him to pale nothingness. A bad temper is no more than the mask of a weak and frightened man. Let me say that again, ladies. A bad temper is no more than the mask of a weak and frightened man. The next person we want to be on the lookout for is the person who loves to just do nothing but lie and be full of deceit. It says, avoid the liar, turn from his path, but fear him not, for falsehood is the weapon of a coward. A lying tongue reveals a craven heart. Lies and deceit are the merchandise of the weakling and the coward. <coughs> Avoid contamination from this foul wares by shunning his company, putridly devoured the pure air. It says, leave the liar alone to squat in his web of falsehood, spread for the unwary. See, the unwary is all of y'all who listen and believe it. You're the unwary. He's preying on the fact that you don't know. So because you don't know, you don't know whether it's true or not. But he's hitting you with a lie. That's all they do. That's what the book is saying. I'm in the book, y'all. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm not telling you what I feel. I'm telling you what the book says. <coughs> Lying and slander, <coughs> weapons despised and rejected by the real man, loom large in the armament of the weakling. Let me break that down. If someone is lying on you, or they're trying to slander your name in all their moistness, those are the weapons that a real man despises those. A real man ain't going to lie on you. A real man is not going to slander you. A real man will say, I am not going to do that. But in the armament of a weakling, when you open up their chest and see what they're working with, when you open up their they toolbox and see what they're working with, you find out the only thing they got in their toolbox is lying and slander. We don't rock with those words. The tongue of the liar is a shovel. Where with the pig does to trap the innocent. So most of y'all who get caught up in someone else's life, it's a trap. It was meant to pull you in. But in the end, you're gonna find out that you were just like the people was when they got down to the to the to the ocean and then Moses was supposed to split the ocean, but Moses was up on the mountain getting the word. So then they turned to Barnabas and they're like, well, What are we supposed to do? And he ain't got no way to split the ocean. So he's telling y'all we stupid for being out here. This whole thing is stupid. I don't even know why we here. I don't even know why we saw all of those ten plays and miracles. We just out here. Y'all know we just need to go on back to Master's house and be happy. He trapped you. Then by the time Moses came back, he said, what is going on over here? I left for one day. I come back and all of a sudden I got a penny on my damn hands. I had to be ready to quit and the other had ready to hang What the hell happened while I was gone? I'm going to get the Ten Commandments. Now I'm back. Now what the hell is going on? And what did they say? Oh, we was misled. Oh, he lied to us. All that bullshit. Ain't nobody trying to hear that right now. Y'all have to learn to live with the consequences of your actions as a people. We have to learn to live with the consequences of our actions 
as a people. We're living with the consequences right now of actions that we've taken or have not taken as a people. You want to know why our communities are in disarray? You want to know why the black family really don't exist no more like it used to? You want to know why we don't have the black political power that we have, that we just have tokens and representatives up there so that they can look like they got somebody on the team that ain't on the team for us? You want to know why they act like every time we decide to defend ourselves or get organized, it's a problem? It's because we have not taken the action or we have not to all lack of inaction. So now we're paying for it with the consequences of it. Which is why we find ourselves in the situation that we're in today. Got to stop and take this time on this last factor with feelings to acknowledge some folks. Or to acknowledge some alliances. But I know that you're tuned in tonight because you told me you would. So I have to acknowledge all of the folks in the United Kingdom. It's good to have you all on with us. Stay up so you can catch this. All the folks in the continent of Africa. Again, you can reach out. We waited. I'm so glad you all are tuned in to all of the folks down in Haiti, Jamaica. You two that are tuned in. Big shout out to my man, Mike Lowry, me here down in Kingston. I'd like to say to all of the folks in Haiti, I'm so glad that you all are hitting me in the box, letting me know that you're on all down through South America. I'm so glad that you too are tuned in. We are I do see you. Thank you for coming in. But let me take a couple of minutes to do something that we can only do right here in the United States. I want everybody in the United States to let me know where you're from right now. Go ahead and type in where you are hailing from tonight on the last facts over feelings. Let's get it on the record. So when the record is... Chattanooga, Tennessee. I already see it already going down. Let's tell me where you're from real quick before we wrap it up. To close out, I see we got the Arizona branch in the house. Big shout out, that boy. Yes, shout out to the 514 up in here just for a few minutes. Shout out where you're from as we close it down. Virginia is in the house, North Carolina is in the house, Missouri is in the house. The ATL is checking in. I see the Bronx is up in here, NYC, Maryland, and DMV. Alabama is all up in here tonight. Arizona again. Checking in. Three points coming in from Detroit. All up in the game. Detroit, we know. Marietta, Georgia is checking in tonight. Flint, Michigan, they still haven't fixed the water. We hear you. We love you. New Orleans in the 504. New Orleans, Queens, New York. You already know. NY to the H-Town, Texas. Houston, Texas is in here tonight. Again, North Carolina, like East. Harlem, New York. Not, not Harlem Heights. Harlem, Baltimore checking in. All of Cali, North Carolina family, salute to you. The 336, I know what it is, Lady P. I also see we got Foxy Alice, New Jeruz checking in tonight. Salute from the general, that boy, you know how we do. Salute to K-Mac. Omaha, Nebraska is checking in tonight on Facts Over Feeling. Last edition, Georgia Peaches, I see you. Freedom Unit from the VA to 804. Shreveport is in the building. Philly, be more in fact family all day long and of course i wouldn't be doing it if i didn't have all eyes on three the 502 louisville up in here tonight big shout out to the new louisville chapter nashville on the 615 checking in along with swanee georgia columbus checking in on the 614 right here in ohio westchester new york big time salute we are all over Adam. the world and tonight i just want the folks right here in the united states Big D, the Dallas 214 is still checking in South Africa. Like, where are you from? Where are you from? Vidalsta, Georgia. Y'all know that we got eyes on you. Kendrick Johnson all day. Got to shout him out. Spartanburg, South Carolina. Jamaica in the building doing the thing. Massachusetts. Y'all racist up there, but I love you to death. LA, the 323 in the building. We got the 901 Memphis checking in. Thank you, General. I see you too. All eyes on Bree, y'all. The 404, the ATL checking in. So everybody everywhere is up in here tonight. We got enough representatives for y'all to understand that if somebody asks you, where did I go? What happened? Don't sit here and act like you didn't know. There's enough people spread around from, from shore to shore that can let you know that it was time for me to go. DFW, I see you in the 225. I also see you. I'm glad that y'all can check in tonight because we got some people that we need to keep warning you about after I'm gone. You know, talked about the people with the bad temper, the people that's greedy, the people that's vain, the people that have lying and deceit. But one person you want to be on the lookout for, some of them sitting up in here with us right now, that is the hypocrite. Oh, yeah, the hypocrite. A 
akin to the liar is the hypocrite. His lips are like honey, but his tongue resembles a poison dagger. Like the spider, he kisses to kill. He arches his tail like a scorpion ready to strike, or swings back like a crocodile preparing for the vicious swoop. His mouths have sweet things, but the cruel sting lies behind him. He's like the serpent which holds on to its venom to his back to be broken, lifts to the size and compassion, and will return you with death. This is the hypocrite. Think about it. Someone who gives you the impression that they think one thing while they are doing another. The man who says he is the friend of all is the friend of none, for he is a hypocrite. The standard demanded of friendship is so high that a man's friend may be counted on his fingers, in most cases, on those of one hand. He's telling the truth. If someone asks me who my real friends are, my real circle, I'm going, mm, that's about it. But so somebody who tells you, I'm a friend of everybody. No, 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 no. Warning, sign. What a man does is important, not what he feels, thinks, or believes. The hypocrite thinks one thing and does another. His deeds do not accord with his beliefs. When truth is spoken, he is ill at ease. But when falsehood flows from his lips, his eye is steady. Listen to what they said. That when the hypocrite is at work, he'll look you dead in your face and have you believing. He'll say it to you so convincingly, you're going to buy it hook, line, and sinker. Because you're going to believe that he's practicing what he's preaching. It says the hypocrite will always be among men. For wherever they are gathered in concourse, there will be found those who excel over others. In the ranks of the inferior ones will be those who practice the dark arts of hypocrisy. You see, there's not just one way to be a hypocrite. There's an art to it. Deceit. They use deceit to raise themselves up to the levels of their betters. This is the hypocrite, and the deceiver can never do. He will never be a real man. And his nature will forever remain that of a weakling. The other person you want to be on the lookout for is the slanderer. Yeah, the malicious word of the slanderer is like a barbed and poison dart and swifter to destroy than the world. The slanderer casts down the good works of men with the tempest of his vile breath. His spite undermines the peace of households and his tongue builds temples of deceit. Those six people are on the loose right now. Those six people, for some strange reason, are inhabiting more men than they are inhabiting women. And I'm only going by the actions that I'm seeing from men and from women. Each one of these spirits that I have described is riding on some man that we know or some men that we know, not on so many women. It's very interesting when you see the Jezebel spirit on a man. It's very interesting when you see these different spirits that I just talked about manifest themselves in with the person who's supposed to be godlike. But if you are godlike and you're walking in your purpose, then the tenets of friendship and leadership that I've already talked about and that come from the ancient book that I've already taught on, must I go back and talk about leadership again? It says, if you are called upon to be a leader among men, Press forward your plans by your commands and carry out your decisions immediately. Let the morning's thoughts become the evening's deeds. And never let the sun decline upon that which could have been done during its rising. That's what a leader does. If you possess strength of body, then flaunt it not. For men are led by the strong in spirit. The qualities of a leader and a ruler are not alike. Look what they said, the qualities of a leader and a ruler are not alike. Can I teach you here with just two more seconds? As long as they have truth on the loose, as long as dignity is on the loose, as long as the tenets of leadership are on the loose, as long as you know how to deal with adversity when it's on the loose, as long as you know the difference between joy and sorrow and that they have to exist at one time or the other, as long as you understand the tenets of compassion, then that's on the loose. 
Once you have those things locked down, then you can begin to walk in the purpose to try to elevate or liberate our people. But if you are being preoccupied and having a side piece relationship with greed, with vanity, with envy, with a bad temper, with lying and deceit and being a hypocrite, then you can't have room for the ones that I just mentioned. Those two cannot exist in the same space. It is up to you, the people who are listening. It is up to you to listen to the ancestral spirits that are inside of you and get out of the slave-minded mentality of letting people control you with doubt and fear. You are always being controlled by doubt and fear. They make you doubt something. They make you afraid of it. So you do nothing. It is like a formula. Doubt plus fear equals nothing. And they have used doubt and fear against you for the last 60 years to make you do just that. Integrate nicely, shut the fuck up, do the job, make the little bit of money that we give you, and don't upset the status quo. Do it nicely. Time's up. Can't do that no more. I think y'all keep forgetting what I said at the beginning. And I'll say it one more time. I'm going one way or the other. Y'all can either go with me or I'll go all by myself. And since I'm having a love affair with black folks, it's kind of hard for me to get away from you. you know, can't break away from you. I feel like in that song where the guy, he wants to leave and he's crying and the woman got to say some words to him and the next thing you know, he ain't going nowhere. You know, with the song. Y'all remember the song, I guess you got to hook to me by the OJs? That's, that's how I feel about the people. So no matter what hell or how water they put me through, as y'all can tell, we ain't breaking up for sure. But it's going to be a rough ride sometime. Maybe sometime we have to be separated. And then maybe we can come back together and make somebody ask me, what am I drinking? I am drinking organic, unpasteurized, unpressurized orange juice. That's what I'm drinking. Because that's good for you. The same way I drink alkaline water because it's good for you, okay? The same way I don't eat processed meat. I didn't know and then we all fall off the wagon and you know, slip up on a rib or something. Perfect. But if you are actually consuming the appropriate amount of dark green vegetables and uh, of, of fruits that you're supposed to and getting your protein the way you're actually supposed to and drinking these juices, then your body will respond just fine. So that's what I'm drinking. Thank you very much. Um, but the last thing I want to say, now, before I go, and I always, I, I thought about this, is um, someone asked me, to, since this is the last time we're going to be doing this, would I open up the floor to a QA and a and give you all, y'all remember when we went into the quarantine? Do y'all remember how it was when the quarantine started and I had been trying to prepare people for the quarantine for some time? And then if you all remember when the quarantine started, there were some people who were afraid. They were, and we got together, we got on here, we talked, and it was incredible. So what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to go ahead and take this off of here. I'm going to change up my sound a little bit. And I am going to spend, I think we got about, uh, maybe about 15, 20 minutes now. I am going to open up the floor here. And if this is the last time we'll be facts over the feelings here on Instagram, uh, I'm going to actually talk. And I know a lot of you all by name. I do. So don't jump into my inbox trying to ask to speak to me and think that I don't know who you are. Okay. If you decide to be one of the idiots that gets in here, then I'm going to make an example of you. But let me see who I want to pull in to talk to tonight. As we wrap up this last episode, in fact, over feeling, this is a good old future. I have no idea. Let me see if I can get in here. Let me see. I know exactly. Let me go first. I already know who I'm going to rock with. That's what I hear. There's some volume there in it. I can hear when you say it. There we go. Somebody say no pork on the floor. If you don't, if you know you don't have a good connection, then don't accept it because otherwise, you know, you're gonna mess up the broadcast. I always want you to know you just have a man with too many dogs in it. Yes, they are very intelligent also. Okay, brother man, you didn't want to come through. You wasn't ready. Let me go to the next person. One second. Here. Hold up. Let me pull him up. Let's pull up Jessica, 1697. Shalom. <laughs> I see all 
all I see now you got to back up off the camera a little bit back away from the camera a little bit there you go now put the camera down you can see the top of your head there you go see? how you doing sister now I can't hear hold on yeah you can't hear see y'all can't hear to be anything ready. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. talk about y'all want to hold talk on. to me okay then I finally give y'all a chance to talk and this is the thanks I get let's try it one more time okay. before I jump on somebody else here we Hello. go sister how are you I'm fine how are you what's your name Jessica 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 you used to be a captain in the army didn't you yeah I'm a retired captain yes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how did I know the United States Army absolutely what 30 branch? years what branch army okay so so what was your what was your specialty engineering oh. personnel as a general what were you I was adjutant general and quartermaster. So, so you was at Fort Lee and you was at Fort Jackson. <laughs> yes. How would I know that? This is for all, the reason I did that to you for all these people who like to think that we have some stolen valor going here. <laughs> only a drill sergeant would know that the quartermaster school is at Fort Lee because I was there. And only a drill sergeant would know that the AG school is at Fort Jackson because I was there on Tank Hill. So Absolutely. Please, y'all miss me with all that, ma'am. I'm sorry. I don't mean disrespectful. I was just a lowly NCO. I did not wear commission stripes. Y'all gave the <laughs> orders. We did all the work. Oh my gosh! Seriously? No, we did all the work. How do you take that back? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, you, you, you have a question for facts over feelings. This is our last broadcast. Uh, you've, I been a know student, where... you've been a student for a while. I have. I want to know where you could get the books from. Which ones? All of them. Well, it doesn't work that way, sister. I've been saying this since since I started teaching. Most of the books that I give, I give out those lists all the time. I tell you what the names of the books are. But the ancient books that you hear me talk out of is actually a set of books that has to be created for you. You can't buy them. They're actually created from the gold plates by a group oh, wow. down in New Zealand called the Chaldean Sect. It costs $10,000 to get a set made. If you have $10,000, you have to write them, and then you have to tell them why you want the book. And then they'll make it for you. And then you have to pay them first before they make the book. And I'll tell all y'all here live, when I gave them my 10 racks for a minute, I thought they got me because I didn't hear nothing for a while. I was <laughs> walking around the house, you know. And if you're living with somebody, you got to put up with, give me money, honey, and get back in your and have me. And you're thinking, like, I know that they didn't take me. And then one day out the blue, you get this, this strange package. Right. Somebody said they was at Fort Lee. Hold on, let me back up. Somebody said, I was at Fort Lee, 76, Charlie, yes. <laughs> what, 92 I'm not, Alpha. We're not going to talk about what year I was at Lee. We're not gonna 92 talk. Alpha now. Well, mm-hmm. your officer. Is it? Yeah. So you remember they the blockhouse. You remember the blockhouse. Oh, gosh. I worked in the blockhouse. <laughs> Are you serious? I worked in the block, right. I worked for the command sergeant major. Uh, I worked for the post commander, General Wakefield. Wow. See, one of the things that people don't, you can help me out, people don't understand, they say, well, how can you be in the Army and you still was DJ? Tell them they don't understand how the military works. No. If, if you have a specialty, mm-hmm. they let you do that. They let they you do that. It's, it's just like um, Ray Mercer became a boxer in the Army and got right. that gold medal. Right. Yeah, he's a good friend. In the Army, and right, exactly. Absolutely. He was all Army, and I did all Army track, so yeah. They let you right. do the extra stuff if they if you they realize you're decent at it. Exactly. Absolutely. And I had a ball. Had a Me ball. too. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so as far as the books, um, I am I do have several snapshots here on my profile that shows all of the books that I that I've alluded to throughout my teaching. They're here. Okay. Um, but but as far as the gold books, the books of bronze, if right. you're serious about buying a set, I can give you the contact information, but you're going to have to write them a letter. And tell them why, because you have to understand what's happened. These books were hunted down and destroyed for, right. for centuries. So these folks have, they've kept the copy, preserved the copy, and now anyone who pays can get their own copy. Now they know where every copy is. Oh, uh, got it. So, so that means like in the middle of the night, I got people dressed like the money coming to my house, you know, looking for the book or whatnot. I got to hide the book. It's always some adventure. <laughs> But I hope I answered your question, and I really, you glad, did. I'm really glad that you took the time to tune in. Absolutely, I love you. Well, Absolutely. I love you all too, and I hope oh that I have gosh. been a help of some type in your life. I hope somewhere the morning mental came in handy, or that the facts over feelings helped you clear up some things that the slave master church Absolutely. would not tell you. Absolutely, sister. Thank and- you for your time.
Thank you. And stop beating up on that dog. He's I'm not cute. beating the dog. Y'all ain't seen me. Nobody <laughs> saw me beat the dog. The dog is quiet now because we're not going to get into all this. We're not going to get into all this. Thank you. Have a good night, my sister. Shalom. You as well. Be blessed. Be blessed. Bye. Back so with feelings. Last edition. Let me go out and pull in somebody else. Give me that one question before we get up out of here. Hold on a second. I told you, we're trying to keep up. I don't know why this thing acts like it's going to hate this girl. Can I see the people? There we go. So let's see who we got next. If I ask this person to step in here and they're not ready, it's going to be a problem. But don't ask if you're not serious. Let's see what this is going to be. Shalom. Somebody said the dog got bought. Shalom, can you hear me? Okay, y'all see what's going on here? I don't know what, what's happening here. I see something strange going on, something moving over there. It looks like a, a fan or something. If you can hear me, sister, I don't know why you were answering if you're not ready, so I'm going to go ahead. It looks like something strange going on. We're going to come back later. We don't know what that is, Ebony Carmen. We're going to let her go because she's doing some strange something. I don't know what that was. Did y'all, did any of y'all figure out what we was looking at right there? I don't, nobody tell me nothing. Let me go down to the next person on the list. Let me see what I got here. Who else I want to pull up? Hold on. There go a brother that I know right there. This guy right here, he's a, a rapper in the RVA. Let's see if my man, if, if, if Kush God is on real, real quick here. Last night of Facts Over Phil. What's going on? Shalom. 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 What's happening, brother? No time. Let's see, man. I can't hear you. Speak up. Can't hear you. Speak up. <clears throat> oh, I said, long time to see, man. We miss you all here in Richmond. Don't worry, man. I'll be in Richmond real soon. Y'all got a statue that need to come down, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. One question you always wanted to ask before we go. Last edition of Facts Over Fit. Um, I remember seeing you a couple of days ago, and you was mentioning the problem like when it's time for work to put their toys down. Man. Um, it's a lot of people on his live, so I just wanted to bring you back up. That ancestral noise that you speak on, I felt that this morning, and I, especially before everything happened today. So the question is, how are we about to do this, Green Master? <laughs> let, me, let me answer this. Let me answer it like this. See, when I say ancestral noise, what I'm really talking about is the frequency that permeated all through our melanin. We all feel it. Some of us yeah. try to repress it. But when it acts up, we all feel it. Like today, it was acting up. It was all over the place. It was all down in Stone Mountain. You know what I'm saying? It's just it was in the air. <laughs> Everywhere you look, now all the melanin is like, yeah, the melanin, that's the ancestral noise. It's actually in you now. You can feel it. So what we do when we go from here is you follow the flow of the energy. You see what's been going on up to this point is that this has just been like a test drive to see if you can follow. Most people don't realize the interface seat is an exercise in can you follow. Because if y'all can follow something as simple as that, we can go do a whole lot more complicated stuff. You understand what I'm saying? And the exercise has revealed some people can follow, some people can't. Some people want to go their own way. Some people don't want to go nowhere. Thank you. That's We don't sort it all that out now. Now we yeah. know who the goers are. So guess what? There's no need to tell everybody no more. You just tell the goers. And when the people who didn't want to go and see everybody else going, they're going to wish that they had went, but you chose to do something else. That's where we go. You follow the ancestral spiritual voices. You follow somebody who's given the lead. You follow as Chancellor, Chancellor talked about in the master plan that it's every, something that every man and woman has to do to liberate our own minds, to liberate with our own hands. We got to do the work ourselves. That's what has to happen. That's where we go from here, my brother. And I, I was going to also say, like, the last sister that was on here, she asked the question I was going to ask you. I was so bad. I was like, <laughs> Tell me the one about the books? Yeah. Well, I already answered that question, my brother. But I will see you when I come down to the Richmond VA, which will be real soon. <laughs> we'll definitely have to chop it up, okay? Hey, Shalom. Shalom, my brother. Thanks for tuning in to Facts Over Fields. Shalom. 
rolling along, we're coming up on a home stretch. Let me see who else is in the house tonight. One, one, one more, one last question before we get up out this piece. I'm gonna go way down here to the bottom of the list. There's some people who think, well, you'll never get to me because I'm at the bottom of the list. I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way to the top. I think some of y'all just press the button just to see what happened. I don't think y'all really think that I will ever pull you up. Well, tonight you're getting pulled up. Let's see what happens with this system right here. Shalom. Hello. You didn't think that I was going to call you, did you? Yeah, I didn't. you are live on Facts Over Feelings. You should not have requested to get into my live if you really don't want to be in my live. So <laughs> now you are in the live in front of everybody on the last edition. And the question was, if there's one last question you wanted to ask in all of the teachings that I've done, now is your time. What's your question? Uh, I don't know even really have a question i do want to thank you for everything that you have just given to me um personally i tried to tune in every time i could um so i learned a lot and i was on your page like all day trying to just absorb as much as i could um i'm out here in oregon and wow. um, <laughs> yeah and there's just obviously not a lot of people that look like me um and I don't really know what to do out here, how to uh, even find people to connect with that are on the same page as me, that think like me. And I'm just wondering how I can um, be a part of what you're doing and how I can just make some movements out here. Because There's two things that you can do, my sister. There's two things you can do. The first thing you can do is be a walking example. All those people out there that don't see people like us, you shatter the myths and the misconceptions and the stereotypes that they have about us. You become the walking example. If you're there, you're there because you have to be. I'm pretty sure you're not hiding out in Oregon, like running away. She went to Oregon. Well, yeah. never find that here. Yes, they will. She will stay out like a sore thumb. If you have to be there for job or family. Somebody said move. We're gonna we're gonna talk to everybody say move. Let me talk to you. Oh, I plan to I plan to you go stay there, you gotta be the walking example. You have to be the walking example. However, all your brothers and sisters know what I'm going to say to you. The first thing is you have to remember that we have been socialized to believe that moving away from our own kind is better. We're the only race that believes in that. That moving, that moving up means moving away. And maybe that might be true because of systems that was put in place that put poverty and things like that in our neighborhoods. That means you have to move away to have better. We understand that. But when you move to a place where you know damn well it ain't no whole lot of us, <laughs> you can't sit there and all of a sudden say, I want to feel like I'm around my people. You packed up and left us. So we should ask you, how are you going to maintain your blackness out there with all of this mayonnaise moving around? How do you plan on staying tuned in with the master plan when it's time to go? We still sit at the boat waiting for you to get there because you're coming all the way from Oregon. Yes, my queen, you should come back to where your people are and then you can get on board with what we're doing. But as long as you out there in Oregon, and I'm going to be honest with you, I had a friend of mine who moved to, and if you know where this place is at, I'm going to feel so bad because I never <laughs> heard of him. He was in the Army with me. He moved to Beaverton, Oregon. <laughs> so you made that, I guess Beaverton is a little, I don't know. But he was no, it's of, not. It's, it's like the suburbs. But... Okay. He yeah. moved to Beaverton because <laughs> he didn't want to go back to Philly, and I never heard from him again. So oh. I don't know whether they, they ate him or whatever the hell happened to the gun. The point I'm making for you why you're still with us. <laughs> and we need you to stay tuned. I'm gonna need you to keep following me when I move over to YouTube. For I need sure. you to move with me, all that stuff. I'll give you the information. But you, you're a satellite. You're out on the edge now. You need to come home every now and then. There's a couple of things that's going on that you can stop through. When you hear like something like Janet Jackson is coming close by, come on out. Your people will be there. When you hear about, you know what I'm saying? If they got the NAACP award going on, they say up in Seattle, you need to go up there to be around your people. All I'm saying is the way that you stay connected is you have to expose yourself to us. That's the best thing I can tell you, okay? Okay, that sounds good. And I want to thank you for tuning in on Facts Over Feelings. I'm glad that I could be able to help. I hope I helped you. I hope you did something different in your life because of something you heard here. 
that you wouldn't hear nowhere else. And I thank you. Absolutely. Very much. Thank you for inviting me tonight. I love you. Really love you too. Shalom. Take care. All right, so we got time for two more. Let me see who I'm going to pull up in here so we can have a conversation one last time. Facts over feelings as I am exiting social media because some people say you don't know what you got till it's gone. Let's see if you know what you got when it's gone. Let me pull in, let me pull in the attorneys real quick. Let me go ahead and get my man Dave up in here. Shalom. Peace. What's up? What's going on with you, bro? Nothing, man. I'm here in Louisville. Um, all eyes on Bree. All eyes on Bree. Sir, sure. um, I'm, I'm watching a live stream with my man Maxwell Mitchell right now. Mm -hmm. um, people out in the street. They've been out in the street for about 80 days now, keeping the embers lit. Um, and people like In Fact and, and all the other groups that keep coming down here, they're keeping the fire going. So... Shout out to all my people here in Louisville that are keeping it alive. And um, thanks for all y'all coming out here. You know, we got to boomerang and get the national attention right. moving out here. Right. And, and, and you catch that boomerang, you come back out here, put boots on the ground, and that's what's important. I guess if I, uh, if I had to ask a question um, as a white dude, I would say, what do the white allies do? in the movement, not just the movement overall, but for MFAC. You know what? It's, it, this is going to be an ironic moment because there's a lot of folks just looking at this live right now and say, I can't believe you got a white guy. That's what they're probably thinking. What they don't realize is you're on the ground in Louisville. You were there on the ground when we got there. You was in the mix. So, of course, you know exactly what's going on. Yeah. So you're the person that's qualified to ask that question. It's very, very simple. And we only ask one thing. And it's probably something that a lot of, and don't get me wrong, that's why there's a book called I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race. Because whenever this is said to a lot of white folks, they get this look in their eyes like they can't believe that we said this to them. But the only way you could help us would to do a 180 degree turnaround and talk to your own people. Educate them on the, it's the systematic institutions that they invented, that they still profit from. And even though they never owned a slave, I've never been a slave. So at the end of the day, both of us, me and you, represent the descendants of a system that they are still standing in a profitable position on, whether it be in law, whether it be in money, whether it be in land. No one is stupid. No one needs to go get sensitized and get re-educated. But what I'm saying, they don't want to hear it coming from a black man because they think I'm going to pay them back for 400 years of systematic slave enslavement. But if they hear it from you, it's a whole different story. That's why when you get people like, uh, uh, you know, Jane, I can't say the older white woman that does all the seminars where she come out and she lay it down real hard on everybody. Mm -hmm. They hear it coming from a white woman and they're like, oh my God, but she's saying the same thing that we're saying. You understand what I'm saying? But because yeah. it's coming, it's just like if they hear it come from you. Yeah. Then they have listened. So when people are like, how can you help? You can help us by talking to your people. Right. You can help us. You can help us by going to talk to the people in Stone Mountain today that came out there and gave the clown show. Okay? <laughs> you can go out there, you can go out, Jane Elliott, thank you. You can go out there and you can talk about, you can go ahead and tell them to listen. Y'all shoot y'all selves too. That's what we got. Y'all yeah, no, no, no. Okay, I, we I, need to go talk to you. I was watching, I was watching, the, I was watching the Stone Mountain thing, right? <laughs> and and they, they came out like, like 20 deep. And they had a white chick out there who had pepper spray, and and it was Antifa. It was a bunch of it, you know, it was a mixed mixed group. Right. But right. they're breaking their lines. They're breaking their lines. I was in Louisville when y'all came through. I was down there at the bottom of the steps. You know what I mean? Um, I wanted to form up, but I understand the optics. I get that, right? So I, I was there, and and y'all had that shit locked down. And there was a group of three percenters that came out there in the morning. They were hanging out over there at the uh, Peter Pit. Uh, in the shade, <laughs> the pit closed down, and uh, they, they don't want no smoke. But um, <laughs> uh, so I watched that same amount of people, the same amount of people that that was their that was their action. Their action was we're gonna go out here to Stone Mountain. They called you out too. They 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 called you a coward. By the way. Let me let me let me let me speak. I'm glad you brought that up. I saw the interview, and the reason I'm not gonna respond to it because he's a nobody. He has a small militia from Arkansas. 
and they look they look this poor pitiful. He lied about talking to me, claiming talk to me. He called me a coward. Guess what? I'm not going to give him the, the, the time of day and elevate him to the level of even thinking for two seconds that he has my concern or the concern of in fact. They look pitiful. They couldn't muster any more than what, 10, 20 people? We brought 1,500 people. They got ran and hid in the library by, from the crowd. They shot, come on, please, bro. Give me something better. Than they, they had, look, look, they came out there with the stars and bars, right? And, and it got snatched and burned at their rally. <laughs> That's their color. It's like if you're a Marine, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna close it down just like this, my brother. I'm gonna close it down like this. Like I said, Louisville is on my mind. All eyes are on Bridge. You know I got the whole city on, on lock with this. Everybody's on one accord. It's none but love down there, in spite of what everybody's saying. We're making it happen. And people like yourself that call yourself our allies and so forth. While I said before, we're trying to learn to love ourselves right now. We're trying to make black people learn to get along and do something without anybody else being around so they can learn. Just that we can't blame nobody else when this one goes wrong. This was all black people. You're not going to blame it on nobody else that was there. You see what I'm saying? Because that that satisfies what Malcolm X said. Before we can learn to love another people, we have to first learn to love ourselves. And that's what this exercise is really about. It's forcing us to learn to work together in spite of our differences, in spite of our self hate I got about two minutes left on the broadcast. I want to thank you, my brother. I'll see y'all soon when we come back down to Lord. Shalom, Peace. my brother. Peace. Shalom. Shalom. So I'm coming, and, and, and let me tell y'all why I reached out to that guy. I reached out to him because he's a lawyer. He's an actual lawyer in the Louisville area, so that's one of the folks that can give us the inside scoop that we need to know what they're talking about. Coming down to the first end of the first hour for the last episode of facts over feelings i'm going to come back we're going to do one more hour and then that will be it you'll have this profile for 24 more hours and then after that you either with me or you ain't if you learned something good if you didn't keep up with the class keep up with the group love all of y'all i'll see y'all back here and it's going to be about 10 minutes because we got to transfer transfer the show but y'all make sure y'all come back here i'll see y'all when i get back we are on the last edition Facts over feelings, the exit from Instagram, because they censor us too damn much of Grandmaster J. And I'll see y'all when I get.